All right, great. Well, today I wanted the opportunity to talk about high tunnel ventilation. Um, high tunnels are popular right now. It's kind of a trend uh, people have been wanting to get into um, for, you know, probably the last uh, 10 years. And uh, we get a lot of uh, high tunnels um, in Alabama. And then oftentimes they, um, you know, kind of uh, – don't get used properly or uh, maybe don't get utilized to their fullest. And one of the problems with high tunnels in Alabama is they get really hot, you know? And so I want to talk about uh, ventilation today. And I think I'd start off with um, how a greenhouse works. Let me get my slide to advance. I will issue with that. There we go. So, you know, the sun is a powerful thing. It's really amazing. And it, uh, you know, you got this ball of energy up there. It takes eight minutes for a photon of light to reach the sun to the earth. And when it gets here, it comes in the form of shortwave radiation. And when that goes through greenhouse glazing or the clear covering on a greenhouse, it goes in the greenhouse, it hits stuff and gets re-radiated as these long wavelengths. And if you've ever opened a hot car, you know, um, or opened a car up in the middle of the summer in the sun, you know, it gets really hot in there. Well, it's the same concept where the shortwave radiation can get in but then it has a hard time getting out when it's re-radiated as long these long waves and so what you get is heat gain and it can get hot fast just like your car does um, a greenhouse can uh, and that's the same way the earth works that's why uh, they call it the greenhouse effect and that's how we maintain this temperature um, here on earth is through that same same type of process so greenhouses can get really hot. So on a clear summer day, um, a 30 by 96 greenhouse, if you had all the doors shut, no ventilation or, at all, uh, you're going to pick up about a million BTUs per hour. And that's a lot of energy. To give you an idea what that is, so it's like burning 10 gallons of propane or natural gas or 10 therms of natural gas every hour, Okay. Uh, it's like burning three car tires every hour or having 50 kitchen ovens open, excuse me, running full blast open in the greenhouse. It's a lot of energy and it's all free from the sun. But the problem is it gets really hot very quickly. And we all think when we're thinking about greenhouses or high tunnels that we want it warm in there because plants like it hot. But actually, um, just like us, plants like it when the temperature is comfortable. And after you get over 85 degrees, you start losing some uh, productivity. The plant's uh, metabolism slows down and they're having to do things uh, to cool themselves off. Uh, and sometimes that's cost energy and or may prevent uh, some metabolic processes that uh, would otherwise be increasing your yield. So when it gets over a certain temperature, plants become less productive, just like they become less productive at uh, some lower temperatures. So just about all crops have an optimum operating range. And we try to get close to that as we can. Um, so like tomatoes, you know, they have an optimum daytime temperature. We have an optimum nighttime temperature. Same thing with most crops. Um, and if it gets too hot or too cold, you start getting problems. Like over 85 degrees, uh, lycopene, that's what makes tomatoes red, becomes inhibited. Um, pollen production becomes reduced, almost non-existent sometimes. Uh, you know, and if night temperatures get, um, less than 50 degrees, the plant won't set fruit. And less than uh, 60 degrees, um, the flowers will abort. So uh, lettuce, the same thing. Uh, if it gets uh, too hot in there, you get bolting, tip burn, bitterness, um, uh, you know, definitely increased pest, pest pressure. So this is uh, a lettuce that I've, I've grown in a greenhouse down here. And I've got just a really poorly designed greenhouse. It does not ventilate well. And I know once it gets to about May, early June, I can't grow less in that greenhouse anymore because it gets too hot. And when it gets really hot, the plant gets stressed and then um, it becomes a lot more susceptible to pythium. And I get pythium almost on the clock. You know, once it gets a certain temperature in that greenhouse consecutively, I'm going to lose that crop just because it gets too hot. So it gets really hot in the greenhouse and, and it happens really quick. And so we have to try to get rid of that heat. And with high tunnels, our primary mechanism for getting rid of that is through natural ventilation. You know, and wind is the major driving force behind natural ventilation. It doesn't take a lot of wind to push that air, that hot air through the house 
if the greenhouse is designed, or excuse me, the high tunnel is designed properly. You know, two to three mile per hour wind is a lot of air volume moving through that greenhouse and it can uh, push out that hot air pretty fast. So natural ventilation with wind, you can have a pushing effect. And in some cases, if you have some roof vents, uh, roof vents, you can get a pulling or a vacuum effect as that air moves through the house. So the idea is, you know, you got hot air constantly being made in that greenhouse or heat is constantly being gained and you get this cooler air from outside getting pushed in and it pushes out that hot air. Uh, buoyancy, if you have roof vents or really high gable vents, can also help out with natural ventilation. You know, hot, humid air um, rises because it's less dense and uh, it can go out of the greenhouse or the high tunnel if you have roof vents. And when it does, it pulls in cooler air from the outside from the side vents. Uh, and this does help, um, but it's not as big of an effect as uh, the wind-driven ventilation. So it's really important when you're talking about ventilating a, a, a structure like this is to consider, especially if you're purchasing one, um, to keep in mind the height of the greenhouse, the air volume, and then even the crop height. And you know the, the tendency in the past, uh, say uh, pre-1990s, I would say, uh, was to have shorter greenhouses. So a shorter ceiling in that greenhouse. And the idea was to keep that warm air closer to the crop. Um, we've since kind of moved away from that and structures are getting taller and taller and taller. Um, and that's kind of what I recommend is getting a tall structure. And so what is the optimum height of the structure? Um, I don't really know yet. We're still trying to figure that out, but I definitely think it's important to get, if you can, greater than an eight foot eave height and 12 foot's even better. You know, some of the most advanced greenhouses in the world uh, might have a 16 to 20 foot uh, eave or gutter height on that house. So the taller the house, in my opinion, the better. And, uh, but also it gets more expensive because it requires more me metal uh, for that structural load. So, um, you know, you get that. I was talking about eight, uh, the ceiling height, that would be like your apex, the height of the ceiling. And then your gutter or eave uh, is kind of worth your sidewall height would be. So there is a thing called a vent to floor ratio, and you really want to maximize this. So the American Society for Agriculture Engineers recommends a 15 to 25 percent of um, vent to floor ratio. So whatever floor area you have, you want 15 to 25 percent to be represented in um, ventilation area. And your goal to keep that greenhouse similar to the outside air temperature is to have about one air exchange per minute or 60 air exchanges per hour. Now you can get that vent to floor ratio with a four foot gutter height. So you can see here on this chart, this is a high tunnel that's got about a four foot gutter or eave height to it. So the vent, uh, and you get a 35% vent to floor ratio, which is actually greater than what is recommended by the American Society for Agriculture Engineers. However, here in Alabama with a four foot gutter height, that greenhouse is, or high tunnel is gonna get too hot, okay? Uh, the reason for that is, is at four feet, we don't get a lot of wind shear. Now, how much wind do you actually feel, you know, one to two foot off the ground? Not a lot, you know, you may start feeling it at four feet. So even though we have that vent to floor area ratio uh, with it over um, what is recommended, just because we don't get a lot of air movement down low, um, it's not going to properly ventilate. And so it's also important to understand that the bigger the structure is, and as far as um, surface area, the more ventilation area you're gonna need. So this is a vent to floor area ratios for a, a freestanding 30 by 96 high tunnel. Here it is for a gutter connected high tunnel. And so if you have, um, you know, where I had 35% um, vent to floor area ratio with a freestanding greenhouse, once I put five bays connected to it, my vent to floor area drops to 14%. Okay, so I'm not getting nearly the ventilation rate that I should get when I start adding uh, bays to that structure. So um, one other thing that's important to consider is that larger volume of air in the greenhouse when you get a taller greenhouse. And I like to give this example where you have two pots of water on the stove, the same size pot, one is half full and one is completely full of water. And yet that's, I'd like to ask, which one's going to boil first? Well, of course, the one that's only half full is going to burn, I mean, excuse me, boil first, because uh, it takes a lot less energy to heat that water up. There's a lot smaller volume of water. And you can kind of think of that same concept when we're talking about greenhouse 
air volumes, okay? So the bigger the greenhouse or the taller it is, the greater the air volume is going to be per square foot of greenhouse, all right? And so what that means is with that larger volume of air, I'm going to get a greater buffering effect of temperature where when uh, the sun is shining, it's going to take longer for that air to get hot versus a shorter house. Um, so it's, that works also when with a heat loss, you know, in the winter. So if I have a larger volume of air going into the night, um, that means that that air temperature is going to be buffered against heat loss at a greater effect than a shorter house would. Okay, so here's some kind of uh, some of the work we've been doing with uh, these ventilation rates. We're just looking at different structures. And so this structure, you see, he's got about a four foot uh, uh, tall ventilation area around the whole greenhouse. And um, on a sunny day, you know, if you look at the blue line, that's the inside temperature and the orange line is the outside temperature. And I almost have about a 20 degree difference in temperature between outside and inside. Way too hot for any crop at 110 degrees, even humans, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, dangerous to be working in. So when I get to a much taller structure, that's got a lot greater vent to floor area ratio, I can see a big difference in the, excuse me, the temperature difference between the inside and the outside. So in this case, the outside temperature is orange and the inside temperature is blue. And uh, with a little bit of shade, I'm actually a little bit cooler inside than I am outside. I can vent that greenhouse um, at a much greater uh, effect when I have that huge area of ventilation compared to the floor area. So really uh, the take home message I'd like for you to leave with today would be the taller is better. We don't really know what the optimum is. It's different depending on where you are in the world. Um, greenhouse or high tunnel environmental controls are very dynamic and it's largely based on the outside temperature, sunlight uh, and wind. And so, you know, a greater air volume generally is a, is a good idea. And the greater the ventilation area to floor area, uh, the better. You know, um, what you definitely wanna do is maximize your ventilation to floor area ratio. You know, in the wind, you know, with a lot of times with high tunnels, we think of the wind as kind of an enemy because normally they're street uh, cheap structures and uh, they don't handle very well in the wind. So you pay for what you get if you, but if you have a well-designed structure that can handle those winds, uh, it's def and you have it out in a field with, uh, where it can properly ventilate and it's not blocked from uh, trees or buildings, uh, you're going to have more success with your crop because it can cool more efficiently. If you want to learn a little bit more about controlling the greenhouse environment, uh, I have this publication through the Southern Regional Aquaculture Center. It's kind of revolves around aquaponics, but it works for any crop. Um, and it discusses uh, the different ways you can uh, uh, control or manipulate the greenhouse environment uh, for your crops. And you can find that easily through Google if you just search SRAC aquaculture and a list of their publications should come up pretty easily. So here's my name, um, excuse me, my email and uh, uh, contact number if I can help you in any way.